All right, so Adobe has gotten around to the 2015 round of updates to the Creative Cloud, and with that, we got some updates to Adobe Muse. So I'm gonna dive right in. I'm gonna start in the Create tab, and you'll find something new here. We have these starter designs, which are templates provided by Adobe, so that you don't have to go and uh, pay an outrageous amount of money for a template. There will be templates coming soon to museresources.com, so keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, you've got five free templates built right into Muse. So I'm just gonna open up this Lulu template just so we have something to look at. And uh, on this page, they, they include uh, sort of a homepage design, uh, and there's another page, an extra page, called Extras, which has some icons and fun stuff on there. Uh, so that's pretty neat. They gave you some extra stuff that's not found um, on the home page template, which is nice. You can copy and paste that stuff where you want it. So the first thing I want to talk about here are these new Typekit web fonts. Basically, uh, Adobe has crafted this library of fonts called Typekit, and uh, Typekit's been around for a little bit, but the full library of Typekit fonts have not been included in Adobe Muse. In fact, uh, it was kind of it was possible to get them into Adobe Muse, but you had to get a subscription if you didn't already have one that included the Typekit library and you had to embed those fonts yourself, uh, it would have been a, he a headache, if not a nightmare, to get them into Adobe Muse. So now they're integrated, they're just in there. So if you go to text and you go to change a font here, uh, just like before, you're able to add web fonts, but now when you go to add web fonts, there are three choices instead of just two. We still have the self-hosted web fonts for things like the uh, Icon Megapack web font or other fonts that you download. Uh, they require special font files, so you can't just pop any old font in there. Uh, but the idea is if you use any one of these types of fonts, they end up uh, being live text on your website, which is great for search engine optimization. Uh, they're vector, so the user can scale the text up and down and not lose quality. Uh, they are the way to go. So rather than using your own system fonts, it is greatly encouraged that you use Typekit web fonts or Edge web fonts. And um, the Edge web fonts are the ones that were already there. They're totally free. You don't need a membership of any kind to use them, although you would theoretically have a membership to Creative Cloud if you're using Adobe Muse, even if it's just the Adobe Muse membership. Uh, so let's take a look at the Typekit web fonts. I'm going to hit Get Started here. And across the top, we have those three tabs reflected on the previous screen. And uh, under Typekit, we have 1,061 font families. Now, that's not including the bold, italic, and underlined versions, etc. You can see here that this active, grotesque, standard font, uh, there are 14 versions of that font. Those aren't being totaled here. Uh, if there were 14 vi versions of every font, there would be 14,000 fonts. So that, that's the idea. There are many, many more than 1,000 fonts here when you add up all of the different typefaces within uh, each font family. So it's really cool. And you can just click on these to add them, and they become part of your fonts list. And uh, I'm going to do a tutorial diving deeply into these because there are some restrictions involved with Typekit, and uh, no one seems to be talking about those. So I'll, I'll be publishing a tutorial very shortly uh, talking about all the ins and outs of Typekits and how to, how to get yourself out of trouble with uh, Adobe Typekit. So once you've got these selected, you can click OK. I'll just click on a, a couple of these. You can also look at the details of the font, and it'll show you the different, the different uh, typefaces here. And uh, when I choose one, I'll click Select here, for instance, since I'm looking at the details. So I'll click OK. It's going to become part of my font list. So it's kind of uh, downloading the font off the internet from Typekit. And again, I'll talk more about Typekit in detail in the tutorial, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about the Typekit website where it's easier to go through and browse and find a font that works for you. And uh, you can tell it's not the fastest thing in the world to add these web fonts. So you might as well go and do this ahead of time. Find the fonts that you think might work for you uh, and add them in there ahead of time. Uh, so that way, when you're ready to use them, they are ready for you to use them. So here they are. Here's Active Grotesque. I've got the whole family, uh, and I can throw light in there, and boom, it's ready to go. And when I publish it, it is ready to go. I don't need to upload anything. I don't need to do anything special. It's going to link up automatically. Uh, one thing to note, and I'll get into this more in detail, is when you do go to publish this, uh, no matter how you go about publishing it, you probably know that uh, Adobe Muse asks you for a site URL. Now, it's critical for Typekit fonts that if your site is hosted at multiple URLs or if you have a vanity URL pointing to your site, that you include all of those URLs in there. So if you have uh, abcd.com and you also have uh, 
cbda.com you comma separate those and there's actually even a little plus sign down here and you can click on that plus sign it'll automatically add the comma and space and you can add more URLs uh, make sure to do this for all the URLs that point to your site because that configures typekit to work properly with your site uh, and then also it takes care of the uh, the uh, site map for your site the site map is generated for uh, search engine optimization purposes and those URLs are used in the sitemap so don't forget those that's a new thing that you can add uh, multiple URLs into that sitemap so that's the first thing that's really the biggest change to Adobe Muse this this whole typekit thing they've made minor changes to our panels over here and then they also did an enhancement uh, to forms that I'm really excited about because uh, we've been waiting for a drop down menu for forms so that people can make a multiple choice selection and uh, we didn't quite get that but we got a solution that's very very similar so um, let's start by looking at the panels real quick there are a couple of very small things I want to knock out uh, one is you guys are probably familiar with the effects button up here uh, if you've ever recolored an icon you've probably used effects uh, and then the inner glow trick to recolor the icon if you guys haven't I do have a tutorial about that in the library um, I believe it's called color up your life some something like that and uh, with that you had to go up here to effects and you had to go over here and you had to do this over and over and over again if you had multiple icons which was kind of frustrating so now if you go to window you'll find that effects have their own panel it's their own floating panel it's just like these panels over here on the side and you can even dock it to the side and you can dock it uh, in the middle if you want it to show up all the time and if you leave it there it stays there and you don't have to worry about clicking several times just to get to your glow effect if you're using it over and over again so that's really nice I'm gonna dock it here with the graphic styles cool so that's a that's a minor minor thing uh, now let's take a look at layers that's another enhancement that they've made you may now rename your layers whatever you want like right here for instance there's a group you can double click and you can rename that group now finally it seems like the type of thing that they would have done uh, from day one but uh, Adobe Muse is built on its own from the ground up so it doesn't necessarily inherit behaviors from other applications unfortunately so that's a behavior that we've long been waiting for also if you place a PSD file now the PSD layer names will come over you can rename layers you can do whatever you gotta do and you can also now click and drag on these uh, little eyeballs here to hide more than one layer at a time and uh, right now it's being a little glitchy with me uh, but that's the idea is that like Photoshop like other applications uh, you can click and drag to hide or show layers there we go now it's being a little bit more reliable cool <laughs> just a little bit more reliable so that's another neat little enhancement that they made to the layers panel really nice um, the other thing you can do now is you can option click to expand or collapse um, all of the little disclosure triangles which is nice that's another behavior from Photoshop uh, you'll see if I open this up right now and scroll down see how form is collapsed if I keep going down um, I think there are a couple more things in here well there's group and there's form and those are collapsed so this time I'm gonna hold the option key or the alt key if you're on a PC and I'm gonna open it up at the same time and you can see group is now expanded uh, form is now expanded there we go there are the other ones they were inside of form they're all expanded so it's easier to access my layers now and then when I'm all done with that I can option click the very top which is page and that's gonna collapse them all back down so when I go inside uh, I don't have a mess to look at so that's option or alt click on the disclosure triangle it's really really nice it might it might not seem like a big deal but if you have a ton of layers especially if you have a ton of groups that can save quite a lot of time cool so now let's talk about the new features that we have inside of forms I'm gonna go down to the bottom here and I'm actually gonna preview this in the browser so you guys can see what this currently looks like uh, the form included on this particular template has these radio buttons down here and when you click on the radio buttons uh, you can choose more than one thing at a time just like radio buttons have always been each radio button is its own independent thing uh, so now we can create these things called radio groups so this actually is a radio button group but it's not working the way uh, I want to demonstrate it's not working in the way that's advantageous so I'm actually gonna go and delete this radio button group uh, I'm also gonna delete that because it's a little bit confusing and I'll delete that because it's a little bit confusing so now this is my form here and the form goes out into this white area and uh, I'm actually gonna delete that white area so it makes a little more sense so here's the form so it's easier to look at uh, I'm gonna go to my little arrow here pointing out the side and I'm going to choose not a checkbox group because uh, a checkbox group just works like a group of regular old checkboxes I'm gonna do a radio button group and the reason for that is when you do a radio button group you can now do a multiple choice 
and someone can choose from one of those multiple choices. I can also go here and add more radio buttons, and in that case it's pushing everything down, but I can always scoot that back up. And the idea is I can either set one to be checked by default by clicking in and choosing selected by default, or I can have them all unchecked by default. And then because they are a group and they're not individual radio buttons, uh, the user can go in and they can pick one of those choices. The idea of a radio button is you pick one. The idea of a checkbox is that you pick multiple. That's why it was a little confusing in the past when you could have a radio button and you can have multiple selected uh, and you can actually still do that. But by default if you do a radio button group and we preview it in the browser it is multiple choice. It is pick one. If I click this and then click this and then click this check that out so we can switch in between items so if you want to set up a contact form where a client has to tell you what sort of work they're looking for they can now make a singular choice it's kind of like a drop down menu that's what we've been hoping for for a long time we've been hoping for a drop down menu so that users can make a choice in your form and now they can so that's really cool I'm excited about that feature big time and the last thing it's not a big thing at all it's when you have a lightbox photo gallery uh, which I think this template may actually include a photo gallery in here somewhere. Nope, it doesn't. So let's go ahead and add a photo gallery. I'm actually going to go and make a blank page. And let's actually apply this master to it. And then we'll go in here, we'll go to our library, widgets library here, and we'll drop in a regular slideshow. Let's do uh, a regular lightbox display slideshow. Here we go. So now that we've got our lightbox display slideshow in there, uh, whether or not we're focusing on the thumbnails, if we preview this in the browser, uh, we've got thumbnails, we can click on a thumbnail, and it lightboxes to show us the contents of that slideshow, right? So the usual, it's nothing, that's nothing new. The new thing is, if we go into the settings for this lightbox, uh, there is now an option called auto lightbox. So if the primary purpose of this page is to serve as a gallery, uh, but there's also other information when you close the light box. Now, when you preview it in the browser, when you link anyone to this page, it automatically opens up the light box. Kind of a neat feature. It's not something I've ever wanted. Maybe you guys wanted this feature. Uh, it seems like Adobe responds to what people say that they want. So I assume there are people out there that wanted this feature. But um, really, it's just the regular old light box. It just happens to open itself up when the page loads. So that's pretty cool. So keep your eyes open. I've got another tutorial coming soon on uh, detail about these Typekit web fonts because there's some detail uh, that most of you may be missing, especially if you're just reading uh, what people are chatting about on the Internet. There's a little bit more to it. All right, guys, stay tuned.